The following is a presentation of TFNN. Trade what you see with Larry Pesavento. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-445-1044. Now, Larry Pesavento. All right, looking good, Billy Ray, feeling good, Lewis. Welcome to the offices of Duke & Duke, 100 South Broad Street, Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. We'll start the day like we usually do for my friends down in Longboat Key, Florida, out there on their yachts. This is the DAC 60-minute, you'll notice, between January 23rd to January 31st and February 5th, which happened to be the new moon, Chinese New Year. That was an A, B, C, D pattern. As you can see, we've gone from 11,390 down to 11,138. That's 260 handles. That is a lot of moolah, folks. And it's uh, with this big wide-ranging bars down, it's going to be interesting to see if it can hold this 11,120 level, which is the important 78% level. Uh, you'll also notice that there was a nice butterfly pattern in between and the nice Gartley that happened on uh, February 4th, too. So it's following the patterns relatively nicely. So I think uh, that's important to look at. Now, we got some really good information from our friend uh, David White here at the Den. And he, he is a master at these ETFs, and he does really good work, you know, with oscillators. And I have to share this one with you because it was very uh, apropos to what we were looking at as a potential top in the stock market. Because if you look at this, this is the uh, S&P 500 ETF. It's a short-term, you know, sector oscillator. And as you can see here, as the market's going higher, you notice that the oscillator is making lower highs uh, that And in fact, it turned down yesterday. You'll notice that one, two, three pattern, that's a lower highs. That's a, absolutely a, a pretty bearish pattern. But look how it hit the bottom back on the 24th. It was absolutely spot on. And then it caught that secondary bottom back on uh, uh, February the 1st, too. So Dave's got some great stuff. We nicknamed him Mr. Google here in the den because anytime you ask a question, he's got the answer for it. Either he's got a direct line into Google or he just knows all that stuff. But, David, we really appreciate all the stuff that you post and bring up and uh, the fact that you're telling us today that uh, Twitter is down 7%, which is uh, also very, very interesting. I don't cover Twitter, but uh, I, I listen to it quite a bit because of, the, uh, of what happens in the news with it, but we'll pay attention to that sometime a little bit later. One of the things I would like to cover this morning, we're going to start right now, is we're going to look at the, the FANG stocks one by one. We're going to look at all five of them. We're going to bring the first one up here. Is uh, someone's asking me about uh, Ruby? I don't trade palladium. I got so much on my plate, I can hardly cover copper, you know, silver and uh, gold. But I don't trade palladium. I don't even know what it's used for. As a matter of fact. All I know, it's been very strong recently that someone that I know happens to be in that, but uh, I am not involved with it at all. So I wish I could help you. I don't even know the symbol for it. It must be PD, but I don't know. Let's take a look here uh, at Apple. You'll see here that we've had a 382 retracement from the high that we made back on October 1st, and that's usually pretty bearish. But, you know, we'll have to uh, wait and see if it gets above that 179 level. This would certainly say say that this would be, uh, you know, a negative uh, sign. I'll check on that, but I don't think I have it. Yeah, I probably do, but I just never look at it. Uh, I could go to the Comex site and find it, but uh, I'll, let's uh, let's let's talk about your hogs first. <laughs> the hogs got a better chance here, folks. Uh, uh, those June hogs look very interesting at this level that we talked about the other day. They had a pretty good move, a little bit of a sell-off, but they're still holding up relatively well. But let's uh, let's look at what's really going on today, and that's in the uh, in the foreign exchange arena. Uh, you'll remember. Uh, we were looking at the uh, German, uh, excuse me, let's go with the U.S. dollar, Larry, stick one thing at a time here. If you'll notice here in the uh, U.S. dollar, this is from our 
I just updated it this morning. Actually, I haven't got today's prices in because we're up around 96, uh, 60 already, and uh, we're heading towards that uh, Gartley pattern up around 96, 95. Above that, folks, above that, uh, there's going to be trouble in River City for the old euro. Uh, there's a really strong reason for that, and the way you see that is if you look at the really long-term weekly chart here in the uh, – DAX, the dollar index, you'll notice the head and shoulders pattern that was perfectly symmetrical, uh, right on the money, right at the 61% retracement. And we've come down seven weeks, uh, actually eight weeks into that low that we made down there at 94.50. And now we're trading at 96.15. Anything above that is going to put that level of 97.50. Uh, Two in place because if we get above that, it's going to have one heck of a rally, uh, to continuation rally, I believe. Remember back in 2011, you'll see that bottom that was there. That was a three drive to a bottom pattern with a perfect ABC D pattern. Around that time, our fearless leader, Tom O'Brien of Tiger Financial News Network, coined the phrase King Dollar, and that was the market bottom. And they rode that puppy up all the way to 100, as I recall, especially that move in 2014, which was a perfect 61% retracement off the low of 2011, and away it went. This is a bullish chart, folks. Uh, anything above 97.50 is extremely bullish, and that is the absolute mirror image of what the euro would be doing. With the dollar index going up, the euro would be heading lower. How much lower? We don't know, but we made a perfect 78% retracement last night that we talked about here on the show yesterday, and we'll just bring this up here so you folks can see it again because it's an interesting one. Uh, we were looking for this last support to come in right around this uh, 113.00. Uh, 113.35, the low was 113.32. We went a little bit higher than that, but we haven't gone very much. But uh, it's been a straight down move, so it doesn't mean that it's going to stop here. But it's going to be interesting because anything below that, folks, is means that the U.S. dollar is going to be heading lower. Oh, we got a caller in from California. Daryl, are you there? How are you? Um, I'm very real good. Quickly, what there, can I do um, for you? The, the S&P, if it's going to pull back here, I'm just trying to figure out uh, what the minimum retrace would be, and where do you, where do you, what what low do you use from the past low to, to figure out a pattern? Like, um, is it that 2675 level, or just kind of where you you think the minimum retrace would be if this S and P is going to go lower? Well, let, let's let's focus on the last the significant low we had, which was around that 2670. So we ran up about. Uh, what, at least that was 50 handles. So if, if – this is my opinion now. Just let me get it up here and take a look at it. You'll, I'll bring it up here so you can take a look at it. You'll be able to see it uh, in the den here. But we had the last low, which was at 26.15. Uh, that was way back at the middle of January. Then we went up to 27.38. So we went up 110 handles. So the minimum I would be looking for would be a 61% retracement of that, which would be 70 handles. So you take 27.38 you know, minus 70, and that's going to take you down to about 2650 uh, to 2660. That's what I would be looking for on this move. That, that's what I would be watching. Thank you, Larry. Thank you very much. I appreciate all thank your help. You for, thank you for calling in, Daryl. We'll be right back, folks. 877-927-6648. The Taz Profile Scanner is the most revolutionary piece of trading software that you will ever try. Wouldn't you like to approach the markets with confidence? As you begin your trading day, it's likely that you'll be faced with lots of decisions. In order to make the best decision, the first thing you'll need is a strategy that will help you minimize your risks. Whether we're in a bull or bear market, a good strategy is to have the tools needed to help you scan and analyze the markets before you trade. 
The TAS Profile Scanner instantly scans and filters over 2,500 global financial markets, such as stocks, ETFs, commodity futures, and Forex. Headed by Steve Dahl, president of TAS Market Profile, the TAS Profile Scanner understands that in today's technological world, the use of top flight software applications, automated trading algorithms, and technical analysis expertise is essential to successful trading in today's market. Whether you're looking at the trade matrix, the ETF heat grid, the market breadth, the landscape charts, or the many other features of the TAS Profile Scanner, this is a piece of software that will revolutionize how you look at the markets and set up your trades. The team at TAS has even put together a 12-part video series to walk you through every aspect of the TAS Profile Scanner, which you can find directly on the TAS order page at TFNN.com. Sign up now for only $97 a month with a risk-free 30-day trial so you have nothing to lose and everything to gain. See for yourself how you can harness the full power of the TAS Profile Scanner by visiting the front page of TFNN.com today and you'll find the TAS Profile Scanner under the Services section. Remember, with a 30-day money-back guarantee, you have nothing to lose. Don't let another day pass you by without trying out this amazing piece of software that will revolutionize how you look at the market and how you place trades. Sign up today. Many of our new listeners have heard about The Tiger's Den. The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information in a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of the TFNN shows, plus see all of the charts as they happen live and have access to archives of all of those charts. You can test drive The Tiger's Den absolutely free for 30 days and greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets and how to make your money work for you. Details on The Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN has launched our brand new website. You can still visit us at the same TFNN.com URL, but when you do, you'll see a new and improved homepage with a much simpler navigation, whether you're watching Tiger TV live in high definition or just accessing your newsletter subscriptions. We even have new pricing in six months and yearly options. Check out the new TFNN.com now and experience all the upgrades. TFNN.com, educating investors. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Okay, folks, we're going to take a trip down memory lane. I posted the headlines uh, from uh, today in Bloomberg. The Fed's Powell says economy is good place with low unemployment. I'd like for you all to go into Google into October 9, 2008 and see what our friend Mr. Helicopter Ben was saying at that time. All lights were green. Everything looks good in the economy. Was not worried about anything like you know, too much household uh, uh, mortgage debt or anything like that. But uh, remember that uh, the news follows the trend, so pay attention to that. There might be something there, but uh, uh, what goes around comes around. But uh, remember, it's just a wild guess on some of these things. So that's what I'm doing here is looking at uh, what these patterns are doing. We'll see if it goes from there. Let's move on. Uh, oh, before we oh, – I'll, I'll do that later. I want to do the a couple of things we got from our good friend Jim Flanagan over at GAN uh, – educators over in Santa Monica, California. Let's take a look here at the next of those FANG stocks. Is uh, we'll, uh, <laughs> What am I being cynistic about? I guess I don't know. Oh, I'm sorry, Maria, if I am. Anyway, take a look here at Netflix. Uh, we've had a nice 61% retracement from the high that we made back in June. Remember, it made its high in June. It made a secondary Gartley pattern when the rest of the market topped on October the 1st. And you'll notice that the three drive to a bottom that happened, you know, back on December the uh, 20. The sixth, uh, you know, this is one of the reasons why we were relative. Well, we were very bullish at that point because of the fact we were at a 61 percent retracement on the New York Stock Exchange Index and the banking index was a perfect 382 and 61 percent retracement on the weeklies, uh, along with a whole bunch of other things that we're not going to go into now. But the key to remember here, folks, is when you see that little arrow that's pointing to that little red box where it says. Dow down over 600 points that day, and you can see that Netflix was sharply higher. Folks, remember 
when we talked about natural gas, the news was so, so bullish and it kept going down and down. This is a, a really, really red flag if you're trading something that gets really hammered, I mean, uh, with the news and doesn't go down. Oh, my gosh, do not be short that because when the news finally comes out, <laughs> it has only one place to go, and that is up. Another example, of course, was in uh, October the 19th of uh, 1987. I think there were 13 issues up and up on the New York Stock Exchange that day and 1,600 down uh, in the 20th and 21st of October. Those those stocks just took off to the moon. I mean, they, those were really big movers. I've got it on file somewhere uh, in the uh, – in the old library, but I haven't been able to find it. But it, it's it's really you got to pay attention to that news because if the news is not going along with what you think is happening, there's something bigger out there that somebody knows something about. So keep that in mind. Very very important. We saw natural gas. By the way, natural gas made a very important uh, 1.27 expansion today, folks. I don't know where it's trading right now, but at 2.59 in natural gas this morning, we made a big uh, 1.27 on the daily. That also happened to be a uh, butterfly pattern. So I don't know if we've taken that 2.59 out because below 259, there's only air there, and that's all the way. Well, it's up at 263. Thank you very much, Ruby. But uh, 259 was a big number. And if we get below 259, you're going to be looking at 249, where even I might take a look at it. So we'll keep an eye uh, very, very closely on that. Okay, the next one we're going to take a look at here is the Amazon. Of course, it's in the news all the days. And you'll notice here that... Uh, we made our top. Uh, the top was actually made on August the 31st, made a secondary high, double top, on October the 1st, then went down, and you notice a three-drive to a bottom pattern that occurred down there at the 1350. We rallied up to a 50% retracement of the whole move uh, and almost a 78% retracement of the high that we made back in October, on October the 29th. So this is completed. Now we've been weaker here over the past several days. We had the big move up to 1725, and now we're, we're lower than that. So this has started to move down ahead of the market. But I believe this rally that we just had is indicative of something, uh, you know, finishing up here. We're going to take a look here at the Google. This is probably one of the one of the great stocks of all time, I guess. But you'll notice that we missed the 61% retracement by about uh, $12 a share. When you're looking at something that's 1115 that's not very much. But uh, that also completed the rally from uh, de December the 26th. So that's another one that looks like it could be turning over. The reason why I'm doing this, folks, is that the, the, these FANG stocks have a tendency to lead the market. And if they're if they're starting to fail... That's not good for the market. So that's the main reason, uh, you know, that we're watching these things. Now, finally, we've got to look at the face of book. Uh, it's always one that's always fun to look at. When it was down at that level of 120, uh, 122, nobody wanted it. And now it's up to 172, and everybody likes it. That's a 78% retracement of the high in August. And it's also a 50% retracement of the high that we made in July. So all of these FANG stocks have negative patterns, folks. That is not bullish for the market, in my opinion. Of course, it's my opinion. And uh, everybody knows it's just like armpits. Everybody has one. And it usually doesn't smell very nice. We want to look at the euro here one more time here, folks, because uh, we're at a really critical level. Uh, we're already let's, we're already, we're 100. Point, this is where we were Friday. We're looking for a move to go down. Just a second here, we'll get it up here, and then I want to show you where we were. Uh, we're trading. Let's, I have to double check that uh, that low in that euro this morning because that's well, it has to be. It has to be holding because my limit minders didn't go off. Yes, uh, it is held so far. We're looking at the low in that euro to come in around the uh, the uh, the well. It did. It went to 13.28. Uh, We're now trading at 13.44. Not too much happening 
uh, at that spot. So we'll pay we'll pay close attention to that one. The Canadian dollar just made a 61% retracement on the long term move up around 1362. Uh, so uh, that's an interesting one to look at. And we'll cover the gold now because uh, we well we're going to have to cover it after the break too because we got some really great information from our friend Jim Flanagan over at GAN Educators and he he shows the relationship of where we are in the gold market and he's very bullish gold long term but on short term he really believes we're ready for a pretty significant correction you see the zones there that he's looking at uh, those those extend from uh, 13 uh, 10 all the way up to 13.30 and uh, as high as 13.45. Uh, now, we've already talked about this several times, the fact that that gold was sitting right at the 78% level, you know, on the uh, long-term weekly chart. So that fits right in with the cycle work that uh, Jim was looking at. Now, uh, we're trading now at 13.14. We got down as low as uh, 13.07. We've rallied seven, uh, $7 uh, uh, an ounce, and that's usually if it's really bearish, it's not going to give you more than seven dollars an ounce. So, the move down from 13.31 down to 07 is 26 dollars, and the 61 percent retracement back on that is going to be 11 dollars. Uh, nope, it's going to be 13 dollars. So, wait, no, 26 is uh. $15. We could get all the way up to 22. 877 927 6648. Larry Pesavento has just started his brand new service, Fibonacci 24-7, and he's already delivering content to his subscribers on a daily basis when the market's opened and even on weekends. Each Monday, you'll receive Larry's written report that provides detailed commentary and a summary on the charts and videos that Larry sends out. And throughout the week, when warranted, Larry will send out via charts or videos or both the key markets that he is watching during the day. This will be up-to-the-date active trading information that will help help you in your daily trading. In Larry's first week alone, he sent out 25 charts, six videos, and a full report to his subscribers in just one week. If you're a technical trader that uses patterns and retracements to trade, then Larry's service Fibonacci 24-7 is something that you must try. Right now, new subscribers can get a full 30-day money-back guarantee. With nothing to risk, sign up now to Larry Pesavento's Fibonacci 24-7 by visiting the front page of TFNN.com under Trading Newsletters. The Path of Least Resistance is David White's daily trading newsletter, and if you're looking for active trading ideas, then now's a perfect time for a 30-day free trial to this powerful daily trading advisory service. David uses his years of trading experience to offer his subscribers his trading ideas each morning in his Path of Least Resistance newsletter. Using a combination of equity trades along with options, David keeps his subscribers up to date with all pertinent market information with intraday afternoon updates when warranted. Don't miss out on this great chance to get a 30-day free trial to David's daily newsletter, The Path of Least Resistance, with no obligation to pay anything. David has been delivering solid recommendations for his subscribers recently, and if you'd like to see the type of newsletter he delivers every morning, then visit the front page of TFNN, and you'll find The Path of Least Resistance under Trading Newsletters. For all the details, and to start your 30-day free trial today, log on to TFNN.com now. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. 
For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Okay, we're back, folks. I posted the chart of the Bund. That's the German bond on the 30-year variety over there in Germany. What I want to show you is what it's doing today because you'll notice that 78% level that we have setting right before us. If we take a look at this Bund on the 60-minute chart, you'll, so, you'll see a big spike up with a three-drive pattern. That big spike, folks, is due to the fact that the German DAX got hit so badly today. That's known in trading terms as a flight to quality. That's not to be unexpected. We're not seeing that much of a move in our Treasury bonds that we are also bearish about, but it's still a little bit early. Uh, the bonds are trading up around the uh, 146.09 level. I think we could easily see them at 146. Uh, 20, but not much. I don't think they're going to get above 147.20, but I'm certainly, uh, you know, uh, it's possible, you know, to be able to see if it's uh, if it's going to do that or not. But uh, it still looks very bearish uh, to me. The uh, see the S and P is trading in what 27.11, and uh, I think that it has some pretty good support down there, like we talked about with Daryl from California. And that's at 27, 26.65, but that's not going to happen today. But there's that possibility setting out there. Anything above the 2740 level now in the S&P would certainly say that the analysis that we're looking on for being bearish would be quite suspect, uh, to uh, say the least. Uh, the NASDAQ had been the strongest, and now, of course, it is the weaker. It's making new lows on the day as we speak, whereas the S&P is still holding above that 2708 level, which is uh, still relatively relatively good. Now, we were talking about gold before and the fact that uh, we've had this big move down. The first thing you want to look for after you've had a nice move down, and our target on this move is 1299, but from the high that we made way back on uh, – at 1331, way back on January 31st, folks, just a second ago, I'm, not, I'm just not making this up, at 1316, we hit the exact 382 retracement of that move, and it was up uh, nine, $10 from the bottom. And that's uh, usually the, the increments that it runs in. So watch the gold here. I mean, I think it's a, probably a sale here with a stop above 1317. It uh, has a bearish bias slightly, so we'll have to see if that's going to happen. But we're going to be looking at it pretty closely here, no matter what. We have Mr. Z from Philly on the phone. What can I do for you, my friend? Good morning, Larry. I was uh, waiting with bated breath for your conversation with a mystery guest from the UK. What happened? Uh, he's, he's having, you know, <laughs> you know, he doesn't like to use Skype, and he he's a you know he's a private trader, so you know he gets real busy. He he's a really aggressive trader, Mr. Z. He presses like you can't believe. He's uh, he just really does a, a terrific job. He's only right about 30% of the time, but the percentage that he's right far surpasses, you know, the times that he's wrong. And uh, But when the market starts moving in his direction, you know, he'll buy two, three, or four contracts or even more, adding to it as he goes. He puts on a base position and just keeps adding as the market moves in his favor. But uh, that's his forte, and he's extremely good. Uh, he, he's also a body double for... Uh, Jason Strathern, the actor, only he's he's a lot taller. Jason's only 5'10", and Tom's uh, 6'3", but they're both about the same age. They look, they really look alike, because I've traveled all over the world with Tom uh, many times, and uh, you wouldn't believe how many people think uh, that who it is. And, of course, when I'm walking with him, you know, it looks like Cruz and Statham, you know, walking through the airport together, so... They always thought I was Tom Cruise, but no, he does, he's a, he's really a, he's a dead ringer for for Jason. Uh, you know, yeah, you know, Larry. Yeah, he, Larry, well, in, listening, he, in listening to you say that, <laughs> I have this image of the film Twins with Schwarzenegger <laughs> and DeVito. <laughs> yeah, I, I love that with Danny DeVito. I, I really enjoyed that film very very much. Yeah, I I thought it was. I'm a big fan of Danny DeVito anyway. So that's what can I help you with, my friend? Larry, uh, we need to talk about uh, the grain markets yes. in advance of the USDA data deluge that hits uh, Friday at 12 o'clock New York time. Mm -hmm. um, 
So uh, I'm curious if you might just uh, lead this off with um, uh, any one of the gra- uh, any one of the eggs, be it beans, corn, wheat, or cotton, <laughs> and any particular chart pattern that interests you, and then I'd like to share some things. Sure. Uh, I'll just give you my two cents worth here uh, on the uh, soybean meal since we're talking about protein and uh, which one. <laughs> Very good, Marshall. You know, every time we start joking in here, all of our comedians here in the TFNN come in with really funny stuff to talk about, you know. Anyway, if you look at this July soybean meal, John, about uh, five five hundred dollars a ton. $5 a ton from where we are now, we're going to get down to around that 312 level. Uh, that's a 78% retracement of the yearly range. And uh, I that's where I think uh, we're going to be looking at. I, You know, these grains look relatively good considering we're in the midst of a Chinese tariff war. And if they come to some agreement, which could happen at any time or maybe never, but, uh, you know, I, I think any news that you get that's bearish, you have to be ready to buy. That's uh, I might be wrong. But the patterns are telling me that that's what we should be looking for. Yeah, Larry, I uh, I concur entirely in regard to beans, corn, wheat. Uh, namely, if if there's a decisive break lower in any of those, uh, I will have prepared in advance uh, buy orders uh, and act on. Uh, large moves lower should that occur with close your eyes buy and uh, you know set your risk uh, parameters um, so um, uh, I'm in agreement with you totally on that scenario Larry I did want to share with you and your listeners um, my preparation for this tomorrow um, first uh, it's worth uh, just restating the obvious, just the recent history of the past six, seven weeks, the trading action in all of those commodity futures has been lackluster. In effect, it's been trendless markets with uh, narrow range shopping. Uh, so the profit potential uh, has virtually been non existent, except for those uh, highly levered uh, intraday traders. And I'll just uh, just share with you my, uh, uh, a restatement of what you know that I do routinely. Namely, I'm just uh, I'm not looking to uh, uh, predict market movements intra-week. What I'm looking for is to understand uh, scenarios and factors that could lead to a decisive intermediate-term rally or decline. And if I can figure that out, and most of the times, of course, I cannot, but I, uh, I give it my best efforts trying to do so. And if I come up with uh, that view of intermediate term rally ahead or decline, uh, then I'll focus my, uh, my efforts with fine tuning uh, uh, intra week and daily trading. But um, so having said those couple of things, uh, it's very important for me to emphasize to myself what we don't know about the ag markets the past couple of months. Here's the idea. Oh, John, we got to take a break here. Could you stay with us with that thought after our break? And I'd like to hear your thoughts on this. Very good. Sure, sure will. We'll be right back with Mr. Z, folks. 877-927-6648. Hi folks, this is Tom O'Brien. If you'd like to be the bank and get the type of interest they receive instead of the low interest rates they give to clients, then I have an investment you may want to take a look at. I'm offering four-year secured first mortgages on billable city lots in St. Petersburg, Florida. The investment can be anywhere from $30,000 to $75,000 per billable city lot. The interest paid is 7% per year, paid monthly. Depending on the investment, the income per month per lot ranged from $175 for a $30,000 investment to $437.50 for a $75,000 investment. If you are in the CD market, you want to look at this investment. St. Petersburg is located in Pinellas County, which is the densest county in Florida. If you're looking for an investment with your principal intact that pays a good interest rate, this may be for you. The supply is limited, so act now. For more information on these secured first mortgage opportunities, you can call me at 877-518-9190. That's 
800-900-9190. No matter what kind of trader you are, 2018 is a great time to try out a subscription to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report. Whether you just plan on diversifying your portfolio with some exposure to gold and gold mining equities, or you're a gold bull that sees 2018 as the year of commodities, now is a great time to sign up for the Gold Report. Tom O'Brien publishes his Gold Report every Monday morning before the market opens and covers a variety of topics including gold, silver, platinum, copper, the XAU and HUI, the dollar, bonds, South African Rand, as well as more than 20 of the most actively traded mining equities. Start your 2018 off with a bang and sign up for The Gold Report today. The Gold Report is a long-term newsletter where the focus is on building real wealth through the management of a successful portfolio of gold stocks. For all the details and to start your subscription right now, visit the front page of TFNN.com and you'll find The Gold Report under Investment Newsletters. Will the S&P 500 continue to climb? For bold trades on U.S. large cap stocks in either direction, trade SPXL, SPUU, or SPXS. Direction's daily S&P 500 bull and bear leveraged ETFs. Direction leveraged ETFs. An investor should carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risks, charges, and expenses before investing. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a fund's prospectus and summary prospectus, call 866-476-7523 or visit directioninvestments.com. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The fund Funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor for Side Fund Services, LLC. The Bull Bear Binary Option Hour, next on TFNN. We're back, folks. We're talking about Mr. Z, about the grain markets and this upcoming reports we've got. Go ahead, John. Continue on, please. I'd like to hear your uh, your scenario for what you're looking at. Yes, Larry. Uh, thank you. Um, the markets have been comatose the past couple of weeks, maybe the past couple of months. I am mentally prepared for uh, excessive volatility either direction but i'd uh, i'd favor higher uh as more likely than lower and of course that's not a prediction the markets could just be flat tomorrow anything's possible but um i'm reminded back of 2009 10 and 11 in the wake of the uh, financial markets meltdown of 08. And during that period of time, the grain markets uh, exhibited uh, numerous times in early January uh, dramatic market moves because the market was unprepared for supply and demand data that came out uh, a couple of instances there. Uh, I am watchful that tomorrow could be similar, and here's why. First, on corn and soybeans, there's a question, what is supply from last summer? The answer is everybody has a guess, and embedded in market price there is a guess, but the answer is we don't know, and we'll likely find that out tomorrow. Uh, understand how things typically work. Uh, the USDA in the November 10th time frame issues a soybean and corn supply estimate. And then December, the USDA does not. They take a month off. The idea is uh, they have good estimates in November, but then wait for the final tallies coming off harvest, getting the crops out of the field, and then give a final supply estimate January. Well, of course, with the government shutdown, we did, not, we did not get that data January 10th. Bottom line, here we are February 10th, and the last time we had an estimate of last summer's crop size is three months ago. Uh, so uh, is it possible that supply turned out to be meaningfully less than guessed last November? Uh, I posit that it's certainly possible. If that's the case, 
I would not be surprised to see a corn move of, you know, up as much as 10%, say. Uh, beans up perhaps less. Um, with uh, that said, uh, there are other details that I'm not going to go into right at this moment in time regarding demand factors, regarding uh, wheat supply, wheat acreage, all this coming tomorrow. Uh, so uh, uh, while quiet markets certainly could be the case, wild action, step function changes in price, either higher or lower, are certainly possible. Just want to alert you and your listeners to that idea. Well, I, I certainly uh, agree with you on that. Someone's asking the question about the wheat market, and I certainly like we we talked about yesterday the fact that the spreads between the March and May had really started to widen out, which means that the nearby commercials are buying. So that looks pretty good. So I think these reports that we have on Friday will give us a little bit of an idea. My my guess is like yours. If they push it down, there's going to be buyers down there. So that's just my my two cents worth. Remember, we haven't started the growing season yet, and we've had five great years of crops. So this is, might be the outlier year where things change. And, boy, there's not that much supply out there to cover us if things got really bad with El Nino or something like that. And just uh, to add upon that letter regarding the wheat market, uh, whether in growing seasons or uh, growing conditions, rather, the uh, let's see of the United States wheat crop, and that's typically I think the number is somewhere up in the order of 45 million acres planted of of wheat, and of that 45, roughly 32 are planted in the fall for winter wheat, uh, Kansas or Illinois or what have you, and uh, we don't have the numbers. We'll get those tomorrow of how much. Uh, how many wheat acres were planted last fall. We normally, as I say, get those by January 1st, uh, so we're getting these late. What I can tell you, this is just a fact, uh, last October in the Oklahoma, Kansas area, uh, those areas of the U.S. received higher than average rainfall, and there was talk at the time uh, some amount of farming wasn't able to get into the fields and plant the, you know, the, the wheat seed. And the question is, were 32 million acres planted, or was it something less? If it turned out to be meaningfully less, that could be a, a factor that drives wheat prices instantaneous, uh, instantaneously higher. And, of course, that's not a forecast. I don't know, but I'm prepared for those possibilities. Okay, that's really good to know. One thing you could help us with is uh, Friday, you know, before we get some of this information, is to update us on what you think uh, could be happening, because a lot of times the news will slip out, especially since we've had many weeks here where nothing's really happened, and we all know that there's leaking everywhere, including in the agriculture. So if you get a chance, you know, let us know uh, what you think, okay, because there's going to be some big moves. And, of course, on Monday, we'll have a really good idea, and we'll, we'll cover that again on Monday. So Larry, I really I like appreciate your comment there. Leaking, yes, info <laughs> leaking seems to be a fact of life these days. Amen, my friend. But we'll see you on Monday. Maybe if you'll chat with us then, we'll give a better idea of what that report looked like. And, of course, the prices will certainly tell us what the report was. And that's what we want to use as our gauge of whether we think these are going to go higher or lower. So let's sort of keep that in mind. Very good, Larry. Uh, good trading to you. Thank you, John. Thank you very much. And for all you do at TFNN, your posts are absolutely phenomenal. I, I really enjoy looking at them, and I follow a lot of them. So keep up the good work. Okay, folks, uh, we'll talk just a little bit. we got about a minute or so before the last break. Uh, the Bitcoin, folks, is down near uh, death's door again. We're down here trading around the... Uh, the 3300 level, we'll put this up so you can take a look at it. Very, very important that we say we stay above that 3000 level uh, in the Bitcoin. You know, we'll see what's uh, going on. Uh, which, uh, yes, there was selling some yesterday, was selling in the March wheat yesterday. Uh, you know, that's the, the nearby contract. So anything th that could have been an order that didn't go through and that pushed it down. So it still looks bullish to me longer term. That's just a re retracement level, most probably due 
to the uh, new moon, Bob, but I'm not absolutely sure of that. But, you know, we were watching wheat, uh, and we still think we've got more to go on the upside. If you'll take a look here at the Bitcoin, we are down near this 3,300 level again. Uh, it's uh, it's very, very close. We backed off another $100 a share. This is important because the ABCD structure on this long term, going back to 2010, tells us that that level of 3,800 was that big ABCD. And you can see over the past few months, you know, it's making this Gartley pattern down here. It's going to be an important one. And these fail. You, we, we know that for a fact. So, you know, make it uh, make it realize that that's what we're looking at. Yes, the DAX, the DAX has been under a great deal of uh, pressure. I imagine it's, it's related to something political or maybe even economic, maybe an economic report or something. And that's what's causing that spike in the German bun. But that's what you're expected to see with the flight to quality. Let's stay tuned for the end of the show, folks. In just a few minutes, 877-927-6648. <clears throat> The universe provides us with opportunities all the time, and I was no different. In 2006, I invested $2,500 in a two-day master trader course taught by Tom O'Brien, then ranked as the number one market timer for gold. The fact is, if you want to be the best, you must learn from the best. Hi, I'm Steve Rhodes, author of Mastering Probability and the Market Timer of the Year for 2018. To celebrate this accomplishment, TFNN.com is offering you a free two-week subscription to my award-winning new newsletter service and there's no charge to you until day 15 unless you cancel sooner that's right we're waiving the normal upfront deposit and this offer is available to anyone and everyone even if you've tried mastering probability before sign up now and i'll teach you the tool that identified the bottom in the dow on january 26 the morning that led to the largest daily point gain in history this offer will expire on february 10th so go to the homepage of tfnn.com now and click on mastering probability if you haven't checked out the newsletters page of TFNN.com, what are you waiting for? All of the TFNN newsletters are informative, up-to-date, affordable, and a must-have for every trader looking to gain a competitive informational edge in today's markets. TFNN newsletters cover every aspect of the markets to offer you the very latest in market news. Plus, new subscribers get to test drive our newsletters risk-free for 30 days. From all aspects of the markets, including stocks, bonds, metals, commodities, and tech, there's a newsletter to fit your needs exclusively from TFNN. Stay informed each day you trade and get that competitive edge that will help you stay ahead of the game. Visit our newsletters page by going to TFNN.com and click the newsletters button near the top of the page. TFNN.com, educating investors. Since 1984, Basil Chapman has been using the Chapman Wave methodology to advise traders of his expert market opinion. While originally hand-drawing charts from the late 1970s into the 1980s, Basil noticed that prices under most circumstances virtually always had a certain number of legs to the upside before declining sharply. Later, Basil found that computer software, which included the standard market technical indicators, enhanced the degree of accuracy in calling price turns, as well as market trend calls. Thus was born the Chapman Wave sequence. Using the Chapman Wave methodology along with other indicators, Basil Chapman advises his subscribers of his expert market opinion each market day with his opening call newsletter. Right now, you can get a two-week free trial to the opening call, Basil's daily trading newsletter, by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Cancel at any time during that trial and pay absolutely nothing. Get your two-week free trial to Basil's newsletter, The Opening Call, today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Okay, folks, I posted the chart of IBM. You'll notice it's one of the Dow stocks. It's also 
at a 61% retracement up here at $136 a share. Uh, that's a bearish pattern in my opinion, but uh, we'll see what happens from this level. We've seen the action so far in the German DAX today. Very, very negative. And we haven't seen much negativity in our market. It's down over 100 and some points in the Dow Jones, 150, 60 points in the Dow. Not really a big deal. But if we get it down more than, you know, three or 400, then it may be a sign that people will be saying, well, maybe it's going to have a little bit of a correction. We'll have to wait and see. Uh, regarding the re big grain reports that we have coming out these next few days, the best thing to do and the safest thing to do is to wait till the dust settles and see what the patterns look like. That's what my game plan is. I do have two orders sending in there on a longer-term basis for the people at 24-7, but we've been very fortunate to buy some corn uh, at le much lower prices and sell that out. And the same thing in the bean oil. We had a really big run in the bean oil, which has continued to go higher, but we'll have some orders sending in there uh, during the report down quite a bit lower uh, to see if we can pick off a good buy with the appropriate stop level. So that's what we're keeping a close eye on. Watch these bonds, folks. I think that's the sleeper here. Uh, you know, when people have this flight to quality, that's a very emotional thing, and it usually is the wrong thing to do because when you got emotion into the equation, uh, all uh, uh, all rational thinking goes out the window, and it makes it more difficult to make a you know good trade or make some good investment decisions. So, plan your trading and stick to it. That's the best way to do it because if you fail to plan, if you if you fail to plan. You will plan to fail, so keep that very, very closely in mind. Uh, tomorrow we have, hopefully, I'm going to have Stan Harley tomorrow with any luck at all, and possibly even Tom Hugard. But we're going to get Tom on the line. He just, he just uh, let me know that they had a slight problem with uh, a little leak in the house with gas. So we'll, he's, everything's okay. But we'll be back tomorrow. Eight seven seven nine two seven six six four eight. Folks, Tom O'Brien here. If you'd like to get my daily newsletter, Market Insights, then now is a great time to sign up for a 30-day free trial. Every morning by 9.30, I send out my morning letter to subscribers with market commentary on a variety of markets, currencies, and commodities to keep investors up to date on the day's trading action. Included in Market Insights are specific buy and sell recommendations for stocks, ETFs, and even options, with stops and price targets included for every trade in my newsletter. If you'd like to try my newsletter risk-free for 30 days, then head over to the front page of TFNN and you'll find Market Insights under Trading Newsletters. I use my years of trading experience to bisect and dissect the market every morning and give my subscribers the most important information they need to know for the day ahead. I even issue afternoon updates for my subscribers whenever warranted with important market action. I'm always scouring the market for the next great trading opportunity. Sign up for your 30-day free trial to my daily newsletter, Market Insights, today by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Wow! Go get them, folks!